New headline from a Fox Business article, employees are demanding a workplace reset. I, I chuckle when I hear these things that employees are demanding things. This is not student government. This is not a political environment where you can walk out on the streets of this great nation and protest and make a sign up and do whatever you want. This is a workplace. A workplace is not a democracy. <laughs> it's just not. I, I don't know where we have gotten in this country where so many people think that their workplace is a democracy. Well, this is what I think. Great. In a healthy environment, you should be valued enough to where your thoughts are listened to. But there is a massive difference between me sharing my thoughts to Dave Ramsey about what I think. And by the way, I do. I've been in many a meeting with Dave where we've disagreed. And we have a lot of mutual respect for each other, and it's not ugly, but he'll, he's a very strong opinion. And I, if you've watched this show long enough to know, I got a strong opinion. But it's not a democracy. It's just not. So if Dave and I are in a meeting and we're talking and we're disagreeing, Dave does value my opinion. He absolutely does. And 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 I share it. And it's up to him whether or not he agrees with it or not. <laughs> and if he disagrees with it, and he has many times, and we go a different direction, there is no protest. There is no demand. Or else I wouldn't be sitting here today. Am I... Am I am I that old school? Am am I am I seriously so fundamentally rooted in common sense that I'm an outlier? Tell me in the comments, especially those on YouTube, as I think this younger generation sees that completely different than I do. No, 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 let me let me explain this. As long as I'm respected and valued in that he doesn't he doesn't treat me in a, in a in a harmful or disrespectful way. He listens to my thought. I give him my thought. He respects it. We go back and forth. And at the end of the day, it, the buck stops with him. He makes a decision or whatever leader in this company makes a decision. And I have to get along with authority. That's the way it goes. Now, if I don't like it, I can leave. There's a novel concept. So this whole premise right now, this is stuff. This is real. Like, I've got data. And this is a really, really silly notion that I can just demand my employer do things. No, you, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can gripe and act like a child or a teenager. But a demand is I'm demanding this and you do it. They don't have to do it. So let's look at the data. Uh, the firm Edelman Trust uh, excuse me, the firm is Edelman. They have a annual survey they do called the Edelman Trust Barometer. This is fascinating. Listen to this. They surveyed over 7,000 employees worldwide. The United States, United Kingdom, Brazil, Germany, Japan, China, and India. 72% of the respondents said it is more important than ever that employers rethink what work means to employees. Okay, no problem with that. Sure. I actually go at bad leadership and unhealthy companies on this program all the time. I'm not going to stop because we have an epidemic in this country of leaders whose heads are in the sand and they don't value their people. Now that is true, but then it gets, now we start getting into that makes common sense, but now we've got some snowflakery that is spreading across the globe. By the way, if you're new to the program, you want to know what I mean by snowflakery. It is mamby-pamby whining weakness. That's how I defined it. People who can't handle change, people who can't handle tough times, people that just need everything handed to them in a neat little tray with the dividers and some sweet music. You know who I'm talking about. By the way, if that bothered you, what I just said, you are a snowflake. <laughs> if 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 that came across as smug or whatever little adjective you want to throw onto that, number one, I don't care. And number two, you are the snowflake. So freaking sensitive. I'm offended. I don't care. You have every right to be offended, but you don't have every right to make everybody else not offend you. Move on. Don't hang around people who offend you. 
We don't need to cancel anybody. Why don't you just turn your attention somewhere else? I got off on a rabbit trail. Back to the data. 67% said they are reevaluating how they spend their time. This, again, not surprising. In fact, I think the number is probably a little low because during the pandemic, everybody reassessed because we had all this change forced on us. And so we, we didn't have to consult whether or not we wanted to change. Life changed dramatically in our work world. And so we started thinking about how do I want to live my life? That's very normal. Now, career advancement, number one issue. This is what they expect. Employees want their employers to know that they believe that the employer should be addressing career advancement, 83%. By the way, I agree with that. People need to see a ladder. They don't want a better job. They want a better life. Leaders pay attention to this. Personal empowerment, 80%. Societal impact, 71%. All strong expectations when considering a job. Now, let me break this down for everybody. Personal empowerment simply means I want to know that you're going to give me the tools, the resources, training to do my job and let me go do it. There's a lot of autonomy that we humans want around our work. Very normal. Now, this is where it gets snowflakey. 61% of respondents said, uh, this is across the seven countries, said they're more likely to work for an organization where the CEO speaks publicly about controversial issues they care about. Now, this is where we've gotten out of whack. 61% across the globe want their CEO to get on television or get on social media and take a side on a controversial political issue? It's it's mind-numbing. Ask Bud Light and Target how that's working out. Bud Light literally pissed away their loyal customers. Why? Why? Because somebody inside their organization said, I want you to take a stand on the transgender issue. And it turns out people just wanted to get cheap, bad tasting beer. They don't want to talk about that stuff. They didn't say they were for and against it. They just went, I come to you for bad, cheap beer. Target, we come to you for household supplies and my favorite loofah. I don't come to you for your opinion on on any social issue. So, But this is a problem. And so we have weak leaders who go, well, my employees want me to talk about it, so I'm going to go do it. And then you, you, then you lose stock price. You get crushed. You can't give away the beer. Now, in the U.S., it's only 51%. If you just pull out the U.S. number, 51% of U.S. employees want their CEO to speak out on political issues. Then run for Congress. Run for president. Edelman CEO said of the survey, as for the CEO speaking up and speaking out in public manner, there is change. Republicans and independents, these are employees, Republican and independent-leaning employees are cautious about their CEO speaking out. But Democrats seem to want more CEO activism. So this is about ideology. People that are more conservative go, you know what? Politics is over here on these channels. Over here, I just want to buy the beer. Liberals are like, hey, I want everybody walking to the same tune. And that ain't America. And it ain't good business.